I'm going to be speaking on the topic of how to repurpose your content. So I'm going to give you all some scenarios, for instance, if it's Facebook, Twitter, blogs, you know, things to kind of get you to think kind of outside the box. Um, a lot of people think like, oh, I'm just going to send tweets. I'm just going to post some Facebook messages. You know, a lot of things that I heard at the conference over the last couple of days, people talked about meeting your customers where they're at. So for example, you know, on your social media channels, your customers might be on Facebook. They might be on Twitter. It's important to look at the data to figure out which channel they're on and where you're getting the most engagement or the most bang for your buck at. Um, with that though, I'm also, I also know that people, you know, they, they kind of um, like content overload, for instance, you know, if you're running your business, you're busy, you don't have a time to be on all of these channels, posting all of this content. Um, so I'm going to give you 41 plus ways, but I'm advocating do not do all of them unless you have a massive team that can do everything. Uh, pick the ones that are going to be useful for you. Um, experiment with some different things. So uh, my hashtag is at the, or my Twitter handle is at the bottom. If you want to take some uh, you know photos of the slides, feel free to. Um, but what I want to talk about first is just the whole content creation side of things. Um, content marketing, you know, it's a commitment. It's not a campaign. So you know what I mean by this is um, you're creating you know content. And you're you constantly like once you get on the conveyor belt, you've got to keep going. If you stop, for example, Google's not going to crawl your website. If you don't post to Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, your channels are not going to surface. So all of that followers that you've built up, um, they're not going to be seeing your content. So here are some of the benefits, by the way, of actually taking the time to write content. One of those is that if you actually blog, you're going to get 434 percent higher chance of being ranked on a search engine. Uh, blogs, by the way, are typically about 1,000, maybe 1,200 words. You're also going to generate 67% more leads for businesses. So how many business owners in here? So do you want to generate, you know, who wants to generate more leads? Like it's, you know, it's already hard enough to generate uh, leads just by blogging, for instance, you're going to have an opportunity to get more people um, to come to your business and, you know, hire you. Um, also, people trust blogs. You know, it, it's you know, if you publish on your social media channels, you don't own the content necessarily. So you have to have a home base. Your blog is a fantastic place. Um, it's also one of the first places where people go when they search for your name. You know, they're going to Google your name, they're going to look at your social media channels, but they want to see what you've done. And your blog is a great way for you to share uh, what all it is that you're doing. But there's a downside to all of this. And this is the, the deluge of just content. There are 92 million blog posts that are published each month. Like that's ridiculous. This is just WordPress. There's 116 minutes that people spend on social media each day. So if you, you kind of start to do the math here, well, hold on, there's only 116 minutes. There's 92 million pieces of content. That's a lot of content that people are not seeing. Um, the top three ways that people are marketing their content, social media, blogs, email newsletters. So everybody's going to the same places to push their content. So how do you stand out above the noise? Um, so this is you know, a graph basically that represents uh, at the top, the perceived opportunity. This is the people that say, hey, I'm going to blog and I'm going to write content until I can't write any more content. And the problem is, if you look at the bottom here, this is the actual amount of content people are consuming. So it's way more content being published and created. And it's not necessarily good content, by the way. And consumers, they just don't have the bandwidth. So um, what I want to talk about today is, you know, it, it's all of this. Like you've got Instagram posts, you've got Facebook posts, podcasts, blogs. How do you pick which ones are the right thing for your business? And what I want to do with that is I want you to work smarter, not harder. So it's not, you know, I, I'm not going to my job every day, coming home, writing an article and getting on this content conveyor belt where it doesn't ever end. So what I want to do is I want to start with blogging. So how can you repurpose content for your blog? And by the way, if you have ideas or questions, feel free to throw them out as well. Um, so the first thing is obviously creating your own blog content. Uh, this is going to help you build authority. It's going to also send Google signals to go crawl your website. Now, as I mentioned, blogs, they're about 1,200 words. Um, I would recommend, you know, don't publish short pieces of content. Google now wants longer pieces of content. They want comprehensive pieces of content. So for example, in this article, if you're going to talk about, I'm talking about Instagram bio link. I'm going to talk about how you go about adding them. I'm going to talk about you know, what they actually do. These are, these are headlines, by the way, in your content. Um, I'm going to go through each tool. So I'm going to be very detailed with my content versus just saying, hey, here's a 300-word article. The more content you write, 
the more that Google has to crawl and the more they can learn about your business and determine if it's the right fit for what somebody's searching for on, on uh, Google search. Another thing, so for those of you who are really busy and you don't have time to actually create content, why not ask other people to help you? For example, we have this table here of four people. And if I said the average piece of content should be about a thousand words, you know, that's what, about 250 words per person. That's not actually very much. So you could theoretically reach out to, for instance, other influencers, people on a specific topic, ask them to contribute 250 words. Uh, you know, that'll take literally five minutes for most of them. And then you can compile that into a blog post. So now you've taken, you know, hey, I don't have too much time to where everybody's helping create the content for you. Now, in addition to this, this will give you good karma with them. Uh, it'll also help drive up your social shares because you're going to be able to tap into their network as well. Now, this also works, by the way, if you're working for uh, you know, a business, uh, a B2B company, B2C, same type thing. Tap into your employees. You know, maybe you have a new product you're launching and you want to ask your employees to contribute to it. So uh, creating a roundup post. Another thing, creating a recap post. Now, this is important because what this is, um, is for example, like what, what's a niche that somebody in here has for their business? Can somebody give me an example? Okay, so um, let's say you are going to write about, um, let's see, uh, actually, do you have a topic, Aaron? Any ideas on a topic? Like co cornerstone content, for example, like a, a, a big topic. Do what? Formula One, okay. So if Aaron wanted to write about Formula One, let's take it one step back. Say he wanted to create a blog about racing. So he could have different sections on that blog. One could be about Formula One. Another one could be about NASCAR. You could have, uh, I'm sure I think there's go-karting involved as well. So Cornerstone content is telling Google, this is my big container. It's about racing. And the Cornerstone content is content that is dedicated to a particular um, category. For example, Formula One. Uh, so Google looks at all this, they look at your signals, and then they say, hey, you know what? We determined that Aaron's writing a lot about racing. We want to make sure that we show that uh, to people that are searching for this because they think it's really good content. Uh, what you can also do with this, as you're writing all of your articles, you can put them on one page about, for instance, Formula One. And your audience, you know, they might not, you might have the best content on all of these topics, but they might not know that. So they might be able to go to essentially a landing page on your website that will have all about Formula One and it will share different links to articles you've written, deeper content. So this way your audience can continue to you know, learn more about that topic and see that you are the expert in this field. Uh, another thing, writing guest posts. So for those of you, you know, you want to uh, get your name out there, guest posts are a fantastic way to do it. Uh, you know, if you don't have your own blog or you haven't started one, start writing guest posts for other people. Uh, this is a way for you to give them a bio. For example, I work for such and such company. Um, in this case, this is actually from, I think this was from a Forbes article. And so, you know, Forbes, they're always accepting guest posts. They want to hear from people you know, that are knowledgeable on a topic. They're not the experts, for instance, on a lot of things, but they have people write that are, and therefore it makes them come across as being the expert because it's a big audience that you get to tap into. Um, in this case, this person could write an article article, uh, they're talking about like social media, how to build your following, and they could have a, a link back to their website so that they're, they're leveraging the uh, Forbes website and their audience to drive people back to their content. Another thing, republishing your blog post content. So uh, how many of you have looked into using Medium or even LinkedIn publishing? So instead of writing your content and leaving it on your website, what you can also do is tap into the medium audience. You can go there, you can write your article. Um, it, you know, it's not about copying and pasting the article. You could write a synopsis based off of your long form article you've written. And then on medium, what you can do at the end is say, you know, to see the original source and then link back to your own article. Uh, this is a great way for you to get your name out there as well. Uh, you're not having, you know, if people don't know your website, they, ha you know, medium has a big audience, so you can tap into medium as well. 
Um, when you're finished writing content, though, it's also really important to syndicate that content to get it in front of people. So, you know, if you want to like repurpose your content, just get it out there. Um, we're not creating more content. We're being smart about how we're doing this. Um, what we can do here is uh, we can uh, tap into adding related content. For example, at the bottom of your article that you've written, you could have all of your content that is on a particular topic show up. For example, if you use the uh, commenting tool, it's called Discuss. They have a related comments option at the bottom. That's something you can use. Uh, for those of you in the marketing space, Zest.is is a fantastic tool. Basically, what they do is it's a place for you to share your content. They will then uh, read through it, determine if it fits their audience, and then they categorize it for you. And you can now get your content in front of a marketing audience if that's the case. Uh, for those of you who you know aren't into marketing, Q promote or Q, Q with three U's, that's a, another great tool for you to use uh, once you've written your content. What you do there is you just submit it to them and then they will actually position it in front of the right audience. So you could say, I write about tech, I write about fashion, you know, I write about banking, finance. Uh, you basically can get your content there so that you're not having to do all of the heavy lifting yourself. Sorry, Zest is free, Q is a paid tool, but they operate on a credit basis. But it's really neat because it'll actually work for like a month. So basically you pay for, you know, maybe like, might be $20 a post. But then the benefit to you is um, it will actually get syndicated for you. So it'll go out to a much broader audience. But does it look like, does it target the audience that I'm trying to go for? Like uh, you, can tell the, you can tell them which category you want to go in. Okay. And then it's up to the audience to do the sharing. It's usually actually a pretty good tool. Okay. And they actually have some uh, trials, so you can actually try it out, see how it works. Sorry. Sure. Uh, Google backlinks to your blog or and its site, or are they seen as spam by Google? Um, which sites? The, the Q and Zest that you just mentioned. Uh, so those are basically, they're not really backlinks to your site. What they're doing is helping get it in front of the right audience. Okay. So uh, perfect distribution. Right. Perfect distribution channel, yes. Like fantastic distribution channel, uh, because the other thing also is, for example, like Zest is actually more like a social network, mm -hmm. because it shows who submits content to them, and then um, you know you could also see, for example, like how much credibility you have, because the more your content gets sent and shared among people, they can see, hey, you know what, this guy submits really good articles. I want to follow him and I want to check out the content he's sharing. Okay, so another thing you can also do, you can convert a video to a blog post. Now, it may sound like, hey, I'm duplicating my content here, but I can take a video, I can put it on YouTube, I can tap into YouTube's audience, YouTube search, which by the way is number two to Google. Um, I can also take that video though and then convert it into a blog post as well. Uh, the benefit here is you know, you're gonna have different audiences. You're gonna have people that are gonna wanna read your content, they're gonna need those step-by-step -step instructions, but you're also gonna have people that just wanna watch the video. and so. So having both things there, very easy. Uh, you can also embed your YouTube content into your blog posts. So if people are reading, if they're watching it on your website or on YouTube, you're getting views either way. Um, you're also though benefiting from the search aspect. I talked about this the other day, a tool called TubeBuddy, T-U-B-E-B-U-D-D-Y. -E -D -D what that will do is it will help you optimize your content with the tags that you need to show up on YouTube search. So for example, if you want to show up on a related post uh, next to someone else's video, competitor, you can tap into that with that tool. Um, also, another thing, how many of you do a content upgrade on any of your content that you write? Okay, we've got a couple people. So a content upgrade is basically an invitation uh, for somebody to learn more about a topic. For example, uh, they have to typically give you an email address so you could build your email list, but what you're also getting with it is um, you're also providing value to that user. So for example, if you're talking about a particular topic um, in your blog post, a subject, and you want to share for example, like 50 examples, you don't want to have to put all that in the blog content. Invite the person to give you their email address and then you're going to email them a download and that's typically automatically, by the way. So they give you an email, they click a confirmation link and now they have added value. Now what that additional content that they can get, the content upgrade, it could be a download, um, it could be, for example, in a PDF, it could be uh, printed instructions. If somebody, you know, you could t play off of people that travel a lot. If 
they're, for instance, taking public transportation and they like to read, actually print and read or they want to read it on their phone, they could have everything right there on their phone. Within that content, you could have further links to your social channels, to a product you sell, a service, um, additional articles that they should check out. Yes. Uh, how would you optimize content so that, so for example, mm -hmm. I, do, you know, I download a lot of kind of um, white paper reviews okay. and all of that, but I'm never a, a qualified lead or a quality lead per se. Uh -huh. How do you optimize your content to ensure that you do get quality leads as opposed to just people looking for that information? So what you should consider doing is setting up a landing page. Um, I, I have a couple links to some landing page tools here, but you should probably set up a landing page. The landing page is something that you put on your site that's specific to that particular piece of content. And so somebody can go there, they can add their email address, so you'll build your email list. But then at the same time, it's a page that's dedicated to just your content. So that way you're not just getting people that come there um, randomly. And then um, also, you, know, you can make sure you utilize the right keywords and get that landing page, landing page ranked on Google. Okay, so those are a few ways to do blogging. Okay, so let's talk about Twitter. How do you repurpose Twitter content? So for starters, you can tweet your headlines. Um, in this case, you know, I, I'm not just gonna tweet the whole headline. I'm gonna tweet the headline, but I'm gonna make sure I tag any, you know, if I'm mentioning a product, uh, that's a great way to do it. Make sure you tag that, you know, utilize the hashtags. In this case, I'm talking about real estate, but I'm also adding in keywords about, you know, townhomes, um, apartments, houses, you know, different things, for instance, that are different keywords that somebody in real estate would, you know, talk about. So um, this way, your content can get surfaced for people that are looking for, you know, that are in real estate that are looking for tools. You can also tweet highlights though. For example, you know, I talked about, I do my Facebook Live show. Um, what I like to do is, you know, I cover like four to five topics in that show, but what I can do is I can create five tweets off of that. And each one can be a little bit different. It could be talking about, um, for example, the main topic and then some of the smaller topics. Um, so this gives me additional content for my Twitter channel that I can also, you know, use to drive people back. Uh, we talked about Twitter chats earlier. You know, Twitter chats, fantastic tool. Um, I was talking them over with Chanel as well. She was telling me about some of the ones she utilizes. If you want to see yourself as an expert, you could take some of your blog content that you've written and turn that into an actual discussion on Twitter. Now, that discussion doesn't have to be, uh, for example, you know, it doesn't have to be a, a two or three hour discussion. It could be 30 minutes. Hey, I'm going to be on, you know, Twitter at, you know, Thursday at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. This is the topic where we're going to discuss. Discuss. It could literally be the content you've already blogged about, but the benefit for you is that you're taking your knowledge and your expertise and you're deep diving you know, with your audience on Twitter. And you're also having the opportunity to get to know who your customers are, who are the people that are tuning in to the content that you're going to be talking about. So during this, uh, during this conference, I noticed a lot of people were talking, you know, they were sharing stats. Um, stats are very, very, very useful. For example, on Twitter, if you need, you know, it's not just about sharing the headline. You can pull some of your stats out of your content and add an image, uh, and then you can have a tweet right there that can link back to your original content. Um, also, you know, some of these uh, tools that you can use, you can use Canva. Canva is a fantastic tool for creating an image quickly for, you know, pulling out stats. Uh, Buffer has a tool called Pablo. Basically, it's just drag and drop. You put some text in, it'll automate it, everything and format it for Twitter. Um, but this is a great way for you to take a stat, you know, something that might just be boring. Like, like if we covered up that text or that, that image, you know, like big deal, I'm glad we shared a stat. But the image there really, I think, helps sell it and it helps, you know, tap into the visual side of content. Uh, another way that you can repurpose your content, and this one I really like, so this is Gordon Ramsay, you know, world-renowned chef. What he does is he encourages people to tweet questions or to tweet their creations to him. And, you know, he is a bit sarcastic with them. He does kind of make fun of them based off of what they make sometimes uh, because, you know, it doesn't look like something that he would make, but he does answer people's questions. Uh, so that's a way for you as a business to take your expertise and to repurpose your content. So, for example, if you're getting people that are asking you the same questions about your business, you can do this. You could write a blog post on it. 
You answer the person on Twitter, and then you can tell them, hey, here's this article that has all of your answers, and you drive them back to your website. Now, the benefit to you is that it's actually a time saver because you're not having to answer the same question over and over and over. You can just share the link to the article that you've written that answers all those questions. How many of you have used Twitter audio or even know that Twitter has an audio feature? So Twitter has an audio feature. So for those of you who say, hey, you know, Twitter, nobody uses text. Uh, one tool you can experiment with is the Twitter audio feature. This is basically available from the Twitter mobile app. What you'll be able to do is uh, turn your Twitter feed into an audio feed. And it's going to look just like this. Uh, people will be able to go to your channel. They're going to have you know, a little bit of artwork and a play button. And they can listen to whatever it is you want to talk about on your Twitter channel. Now, the great thing about this is, for those of you who say, hey, I'm too busy, I don't have time to actually sit down and write content, you can just record your content. You can do it from your smartphone, you can do it while you're sitting in a taxi cab, on a train ride, uh, in an Uber, doesn't really matter, but you can be tweeting out your content um, in an audio form. And then I'd recommend if you experiment with this, make sure you check your Twitter analytics and see what kind of engagement you're getting and to see you know, if people are actually listening to this, how much they're listening to it. You know, somebody asked the question earlier about video. How long does video need to be? It needs to be as long as it takes to get your point across. So, you know, there's no like, oh, it's two minutes or less. You have to look at the insights. You have to look at the data and you have to refine, refine, and refine. Okay, so let's talk about Facebook. How do you repurpose content for Facebook? You know, you've got your standard status update. Uh, we have the Facebook stories that I talked about earlier. Um, one thing that I really like about doing something, for instance, with Facebook stories or Facebook Live, it's to utilize this tool, it's called Pretty Links. What it does is you can take your original URL and you can turn it into basically a branded shortened link. So for example, um, I do this with all of my shows that I do. If I want people to go and I want them to check it out, instead of telling them go to, uh, you know, www.thewebsite slash, uh, you know, um, article dash one dash, you know, uh, read or something like that, um, I can tell them to go to the website forward slash, you know, an easy to remember name. And I do this on video on Facebook stories. And then that way people can know to go to the content. I don't have to worry about, well, did they, you know, did they transcribe it correctly? Um, was it hard for them to hear it? It basically is very easy for, and you, can, you can put it in even as a, a piece of text on your Facebook story. Now that tool, by the way, also works for anything else you're doing. Uh, so if you're going to share a piece of content on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, in a podcast, in a video, um, make sure you, know, you, you make it easy for your customers to get to that information. Another thing you can create is a teaser video. So for example, my friend Scott Monty here, you know, he's basically telling people what's coming up and where they can tune into his content. In his case, um, this is, you know, he was talking about, you know, a show he was doing that was Sundays with Scott. And in this case, he basically just goes on Facebook Live, he does this maybe for you know, a couple of minutes, and then uh, he now has started to build an audience to tune into his show later on. You know, it's very similar, actually, if you're watching, like, how many of you watch TV? You, know, you have a premiere, like you have like, a little preview that says, hey, my show's coming on, you know, on Sundays at 4 p.m. Um, that's, you know, that's one option. Well, this is basically creating the same thing. It's telling people ahead of time when you're going to be going live so that you know, you know that they can tune in. Uh, Facebook Live, another thing that also works very well. So you know, you've created, say, a written piece of content. So what you can do with Facebook Live is you can discuss that topic with your fans. So for example, if you have a lot of people that ask a question, this is a great way for you to get to know your audience. And this works for Facebook. It also works for YouTube. Uh, but basically, what you can do is, uh, with Facebook Live, you can go on to your Facebook Live. You can encourage people to tune in. They can, you know, they followed your journey because of your Facebook story or your Facebook post, but now they see your Facebook Live and you, know, you can interact with them in real time, you can see who your audience is, you can start to actually understand who your customer is versus, let me just you know, use the, I think somebody said what, spray and pray or something like that with you know, content, it doesn't work that way. Like you need to actually pay attention to the signals. Hey, I see this person always popping into my, my show, huh, maybe I need to invite them to write content, maybe I need to actually connect with them, start to build a relationship. So how many know if, that their Facebook page has a video cover section? 
So your Facebook page, you know, at the top, you can put a static photo, but hey, that's kind of boring, right? Everybody wants video. So you can create a Facebook cover video. Uh, what this can be is it can be a sizzle reel about your company. It can be that, you know, that, that Audi, uh, what, five second video was fantastic uh, that people were creating. You could upload that as your Facebook cover photo. It's a way to, you know, give your customers signals uh, so that they know what they need to come and check out uh, on your business. It could be a new initiative you launched, a new product. So you've got a show coming up that you want to advertise, um, and, you know, anything that's new, it's a great place to put that because it shows up uh, on your page, but also uh, in your Facebook newsfeed when people hover over your business's name. Uh, for those of you who need a tool, if you're not into, you know, if you're not a videographer, Animoto, it's a great tool as well for uh, quickly creating video cover photos. They have a, a lot of templates, um, a lot of stock image photos as well that you can pull in, or you can pull in your own content. Uh, Facebook audio, another feature. So, you know, if your audience is on Facebook, uh, this is a fantastic way to, uh, you know, take snippets of your content or to actually, you know, take the full piece of content and put it on Facebook. In this case, this is a friend of mine. They basically pulled out a portion of their uh, interview that they did with somebody, a podcast. And what they've done here now is it's just, you know, a, a, like maybe 15 to 20 seconds. And then it's a drive back to check out the full podcast or to check out that blog post that somebody's created. Um, again, it's repurposing the content that you may have already created versus let me create something new for my channels. Uh, Another, you know, I talked about this earlier, but a Facebook post, you know, it's great to share a Facebook post, but you also have to remember this, uh, use the, the wifey model, what's in it for you, meaning what's in it for your reader. It's not about your business, you know, we heard about this earlier, they don't care about the process, what all it took to make this, they want to know what's in it for them. So just keep that in mind when you're writing your article or you're writing your post. Uh, keep it in mind, you know, again, give back to your customers because the more you give, the more you're going to actually get. It may not be immediately, but it will definitely be down the road. Road. Uh, for those of you who have a Facebook post that you want to you know, get more exposure on, you can also embed your Facebook post. Uh, all you have to do is uh, go to the Facebook post, there's a little drop down in the top corner, there'll be an embed post option, and you can pull all of your conversations. You can pull just the post, you can pull every single comment that people have made. It's a great way for people that are following your business on your website to learn more about your social posts as well. Now these, these content pieces of content, they don't have to be the same. Uh, what you want to do is you, know, you kind of want to tease or you want to incorporate it into your existing content. Um, so keep that in mind, but great way to also gather some exposure on your content. Because remember, the more people engage with your content, the more Facebook and Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, doesn't matter. They're all going to show, uh, show your content more to people as you get more people to actually engage with it and send them the signals. Uh, for those of you looking for a very uh, a quick and low cost way to get your content out there, repurpose it, use the boost post feature on Facebook. Uh, this one is pretty simple. You basically select a post, you can give them uh, you know, a rough audience of who you want to try and reach, and then you know, your post is then shown to additional people. I can tell you for a fact, like you will get return on using boost post. You don't have to do it with every piece of content. I would use it for the important ones. For those of you who want to go even further though, Facebook ads, you know, this is, it's not like boost post is like level one, Facebook ads is like two through 10. So what you can do with boost, uh, with the Facebook ads option is you can, you can be very specific about the campaign, what you're trying to actually drive from your content. It could be, you know, engagement, it could be video views, conversions. You can go in, you can target your competitors, for example, by putting in the, pa the pages, the interests um, of, you know, of your company in your Facebook ads. You can split test them as well, so that way you can run two different examples. For example, if I want to see, you know, in this case I've got a blue bottle and a turquoise bottle here. I want to see which, you know, this is basically split testing. I want to see, well, which one's actually going to perform better on Facebook. Uh, I could publish this one with the same text, and this is the same one as well, and I change the color, and then I look at the insights to see what resonates with my audience, and then I use that to help me make my marketing decisions. Uh, for those of you who also want to get to know your audience better, utilize Facebook groups. Uh, 
You know, it's a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic way to build a community. Um, it's where, you know, you get to know your audience. You get to actually see the people who are your cheerleaders, you know, who are your brand advocates. You know, you're, we talked earlier about influencers. A lot of people, you know, they do, they try to find an influencer and they say, hey, you know, they've got a big audience. I want to bring them in. Your influencers are literally right in front of you. They're the people that are commenting on your content, that are engaging with it. You know, get to know those people first and then see where they can lead you because they might be able to lead you to other people. Uh, another thing you can also tap into, by the way, with the Facebook group, uh, we talked about this earlier with Facebook Live, you know, having a discussion around a piece of content. You can do the same thing within a Facebook group. Uh, you can have, for example, like a Q&A like Friday, where every Friday you take a topic you've already, you know, discussed or you've written about, you share that blog post with them, and then you invite them to ask their questions. It's a great way to build community uh, amongst your users on Facebook. So how many in here use Instagram? Okay, so Instagram. Uh, how do we go about repurposing Instagram content? For starters, Instagram stories. And again, it's, you know, you're going on video, you're telling people uh, why they should keep tuning in, or you're sharing a little bit of a snippet to get, you know, to entice them to take that next step to follow you along that journey or to actually want to get in touch with your business. So Instagram stories, uh, great way for you to, you know, to use the video aspect to add some filters, to add your location, and to get people to you know, come along for the ride. Uh, Instagram, hey, they also have the same features Facebook has. You can embed your Instagram post within your Facebook content. Or sorry, within your uh, blog content. So uh, you can pull your content from Instagram because Instagram is primarily mobile. You may have people that want to read it on desktop or tablets. Um, so what you can do there is you can embed your content and build your audience and also build your exposure uh, for your Instagram post. How about Pinterest? Anybody in here using Pinterest? Okay, a couple of people. Pinterest is a fantastic tool for driving traffic. It's a tool that a lot of people, you know, kind of like avoid. They don't really think about. Uh, they're doing some amazing work. So what they're doing now is uh, one: you can go on Instagram. You can you could create a board, for example, on your Pinterest channel that might be your Instagram posts. So therefore, if your Pinterest content, you have a, people that build a big audience off of search, or they get included in other people's boards, you can also build a board for Pinterest. Uh, that is just about your Instagram content. You know, and with this, you could, you know, you can customize it, you can make this public, you can make it private if you want to, you can build it behind the scenes and then launch it to everyone. Uh, but this is another great way for you to, in this case, um, repurpose your content, build your Instagram following. So you're repurposing your Instagram content over to Pinterest. Uh, utilizing the push of Instagram to Twitter, I, I don't really support the idea of automation for getting social content out there, but there is a share to Twitter button. So for those of you who kind of want to keep things active, you can utilize the share option for Twitter. This will basically take all your Instagram content and push it out to Twitter. Um, if you want to go a step further, you may want to write this tool down. It's IFTTT. It's called If This Then That. Basically, what you can do is you could say, you build a recipe is what you do. So you can go on IFTTT, you can say, when I send an Instagram post with the following hashtag, I want to automatically push this out to my Twitter channel. And it's only for, and that way it picks up all the content. It's essentially marketing automation. Um, you're basically able to take your Instagram content and have it shared out to your Twitter content. When somebody clicks the link, it's going to drive them back to your Instagram channel and to your post. Uh, another new feature for Instagram, it's the Instagram carousel ad. This is a way for you to get creative with anything that you're publishing on Instagram. You know, this is basically a way to take a complex task, or in this case, it's a photo that doesn't really fit on Instagram, and actually make it more engaging. Uh, in this case, you know, they've taken a whole bunch of vegetables, and they've now, like, they've created a post that's going to keep people uh, looking at your Instagram content. They're going to have to stop, and they're going to have to swipe. And by the way, anything that's got the, there's, a, there's like four dots here at the bottom, anything with the four dots, uh, that's basically a carousel post. And Instagram's also now allowing you to sequence ads within this as well. So you could run uh, a carousel post where it's two pieces of content, maybe there's an ad in the middle that stops them, and then there's two pieces of content that kind of finish things as well. So definitely check that out. 
Um, I also mentioned, by the way, the tool Pretty Links here. The reason I mentioned that is because you could take, you know, within your Instagram content here, I could have a fifth piece of content, and the first four show me the item, and the fifth on the swipe might be an image that has a URL that I want somebody to go visit. In this case, it's, you know, it's an easy to remember URL. It could be, for example, this is what, Tesco Food. So it could be like tescofood.com forward slash um, vegetables or something like that. So that way it's easy for people to, for you to drive them where you want them to go. Uh, we talked about Instagram bio links earlier. Basically, what this does is it lets you make your Instagram channel into almost a full-fledged website. You know, right now, you can only have one link on your Instagram bio. However, what, if you use tools like Lead Pages, Shortstack, or Linktree, uh, what these will do is they'll let you build a landing page so when somebody clicks on your bio link, it's custom. It pulls up, in this case, it could show them, here's my blog, hey, I have a podcast, I have a YouTube channel, and then I might have a service is option that I want them to go check out. You know, this really varies per business, but it's a great way for you to, um, you know, let everybody know the best ways to get in touch with you. And it's actually really easy to set up. It's all literally drag and drop. You can, you can have that built in like 30 minutes. Uh, by the way, for those of you, we talked about landing pages earlier. Uh, those are some really good landing page tools to check out. They can also be utilized to help you build your email list, um, to help you build your uh, you know, landing page for a specific content on your website too. Okay, so we talked about running Instagram carousel ads, but in this case, just running Instagram ads in general, that's gonna be a very useful way for you to also repurpose your content. Um, I'd recommend setting aside, I said this earlier, like yesterday, you know, set aside some budget for running ads. It doesn't have to be Facebook ads, it could be Instagram ads, wherever your audience is at. For example, if I know my audience is on Instagram, then I wanna have some budget that's gonna advertise my channel. I wanna also have budget to run for specific pieces of content or certain initiatives that I'm doing. Uh, this way, you know, when you post content, it basically does this, it goes up and then it's gonna fall flat. The benefit to having the ads is it's gonna go up and then hopefully there's gonna be a slight dip and then it's gonna keep going up because it's gonna get shown to more people. Again, the more people that share it, the more people they're gonna come back, you know, and, ch and check out like what your business has to offer, what services you do. Um, IGTV, is anybody using IGTV? Okay, got one person here that's used IGTV. So basically, IGTV is Instagram's version of a YouTube channel. What they want you to do is they want you to have basically a separate place for uploading longer videos. Uh, the benefit of IGTV though is it has a, a very nifty feature that at the end of a video, people can swipe up on the video to other content. So for example, I could go live on my smartphone, publish something to Instagram to, you know, to engage with my audience, and then at the end, it could be, for example, it could be to drive them to a longer video. And it doesn't matter if it's on Instagram, if it's a YouTube video, a Facebook video, a blog blog post, uh, a link to, for instance, sign up for a webinar, uh, a service page, any of that, you know, it's all fair game. So IGTV, I would say right now, there's a lot of people that aren't using it because they think it's still kind of, they're kind of finding their way. But one thing I talked about yesterday is that Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp, basically when they start to publish features and say, you know what, hey, we just rolled out like yesterday, sharing of, uh, Instagram TV content to Instagram stories. When they start doing that, that's basically their signal. They're not telling you directly, but it's their signal that they want you to start using that because they're gonna start to value it more in the newsfeed, or in this case, in the Instagram feed. Uh, WhatsApp. So one thing I've learned being overseas is that WhatsApp is a fantastic place to go and you know, to really get to know your audience. Uh, one of my favorite features here is to create a WhatsApp chat or basically a group. Uh, the benefit here is that you can have, basically use permission marketing. I could send out a post to somebody and say, send me a WhatsApp and tell me you know, if you want me to include you in a special list. That special list is whenever I publish new content, I could send it out to that WhatsApp group. And then this way I'm, I'm 
getting people that I know are interested because I told them, one, tell me you want me, one, message me, so you have to actually open WhatsApp and send me a message. Two, tell me you actually, you know, write yes. And then three, now I have permission to actually send the messages. So a fantastic way for you to get your information out on WhatsApp versus, you know, and, and we could have all small conversations, but you can build, you know, different chats for different initiatives you want to do. For example, if you want to get very detailed, you can say, you know, I'm going to set up a group for, uh, you know, in this case, um, I want something on uh, digital content. I want something for print. And I want something on advertising. Like you could have different pieces of content that go to those groups and you can build three separate groups. Uh, WhatsApp's also experimenting with ads, by the way. Um, I know a lot of people don't like ads, but you know, ads are essentially the future at the moment. Um, but WhatsApp is experimenting with uh, WhatsApp ads that are going to be showing up like as your status update. They haven't, they have not started doing it completely for everybody yet, but they're coming. So the good thing is if you learn Facebook ads, you learn Instagram ads, WhatsApp ads are going to be the exact same feature. And you'll probably create them within Facebook ads manager, just like you can for Instagram ads. Okay, LinkedIn. So I know Aaron is a big fan of LinkedIn. You know, LinkedIn is a fantastic place. It used to be like, hey, this is my like digital graveyard, my digital Rolodex. I never really engaged with people. And over the last couple of years, since Microsoft made their purchase of them, uh, it is a great place for you to you know, really get connected with other business owners, other people that are you know, very similar to you. Uh, one, you know, a couple ways you can repurpose your content. Update your LinkedIn status with your latest piece of content. It could be, for example, if you got asked to write a guest post for somebody, that's a great you know, place to put that content. If you've written your own content, great place to go as well. Um, so write a status update. Another thing though, you can also do, for example, if you've got a show or you've got an, uh, an audio that you were featured on, share that as well on your LinkedIn status update. Again, it's going to get people like to check out your profile. The more people check you out, the more people that you, know, you might get recommended to um, based on your connections. Uh, also, LinkedIn has this nifty new feature. For those of you who say, hey, you know what? I added a company that I work for. Like, fantastic. What am I going to ever do with this? So they have a feature where if you go and you click on next to the company, there's a way for you to add any content that you've written for them. So for example, if you're writing company blog posts, start putting that in your LinkedIn profile. You're building out your, basically, you're building out your digital presence. Uh, if you run your own, your own company, put your content in there as well. If you have a show that you do, you know, if it's a podcast, put every single episode into your LinkedIn uh, content based off of the companies that you work for. Um, for example, if you've written, you know, patents, for example, or, you know, you've got a bunch of trademarks, put that in there as well. Like, you know, these are all signals because all this content, essentially what happens is it helps build this web about you. You know, it shows all the pieces, all the signals, the things that you do so that somebody can get a bigger picture about who you are, the things that you talk about, the subjects you know, you know, and all those sorts of things. So in this case, this is actually an example. I was writing at one point for Meltwater News. Um, any article that I was writing for them would go on here. And the benefit there was that it's not just saying, hey, great, I work for them. People can actually go check out the work that you've done and then consider hiring you as well, in this case, to write for them. Uh, LinkedIn, I mentioned this earlier, LinkedIn also has its own publishing platform. So you can take some of your content that you've written. Uh, you can also go back to LinkedIn. This is a way for you to also keep people active on your channel, uh, on your LinkedIn channel. You can start writing uh, longer form content. You can repurpose an article, uh, but basically you can tell them here's the original content, linking back to your own site, but it's a way for you to build your presence on LinkedIn. Okay. YouTube, I talked about this earlier about, about you know, making a video and then turning it into a blog post. Same thing, let's make a blog post and turn it into a video. People, you know, it, it's not duplicate content. You're gonna be able to tap into YouTube's search engine. I can't stress that enough because you know, we know people are watching more videos. So we write the, you know, we do the written content because we want Google to find us, we want them to surface our content, but we want people on YouTube to go and check out our videos as well. So you know, this is great. You have to kind of look at your audience. What kind of content can I create? How to's, instructionals, I can ask people to give me testimonials because all of this builds a body of work for you, whether you're, you know, running your own company, running an agency, working for a Fortune 500 company. So definitely consider making all of your blog posts into videos. Uh, so I talked about this earlier, upload any videos that you've done to YouTube. For example, 
if you've done a video on Facebook, say it's a Facebook Live, you can actually download that and upload it to your YouTube channel. This way you're not having to constantly come up with you know, new content. The other benefit here is that it creates an archive. So even though, for instance, somebody saw it on Facebook, you know, not everybody is on Facebook. So it may sound strange to say that, but not everybody is on Facebook. Uh, so consider uploading it over to YouTube and then you know, maybe build a playlist on your YouTube channel that helps to you know, unite all of your content together so it's easy for people to find and to check out your content. Uh, for example, you know, sometimes if you, know, if you want, um, you can basically, you're breaking your content down for your audience uh, so that you know, they know what all to go check out. So email newsletters, email is not, I'll tell you right now, email is not dead. People still check email. Email is actually one of the best ways for you to get in front of your audience. Uh, so here are a couple ways that you can go about repurposing your content utilizing email newsletters. One of those is to send out, for instance, a daily email or a weekly email or a monthly email, whatever your audience is interested in. Now this article, could, this email could contain the, you know, the whole piece of content so people read it. Um, it could be though uh, a link back to the actual content for them to go read, but you wanna have a call to action, something that's gonna encourage them to have a discussion with you. Uh, so for example, I like tools like, I like Aweber, but this other one is really neat. So for those of you struggling with getting Facebook, uh, getting people in front of your Facebook content, it's called Relike. And what it does is it lets you create a newsletter off of just your Facebook content. So for example, I don't have to pay for ads, I can go and I can customize the newsletter completely off of the content that is from my Facebook page. You know, in this case, uh, you have people, you know, you've got Netflix using it, you've got people from like Bruno Mars, so you've got, you know, companies, brands, I think Louis Vuitton is on there as well, but it's a way for you to be visual and to get your content in front of your audience. Uh, another, uh, this is actually one of my absolute favorite ways to repurpose your content, is to set up an autoresponder. Does anybody know what an autoresponder is? Okay, a couple people. Okay, so an autoresponder basically, it, it sounds all like techy and like boring. Basically, what it is is you're taking uh, a whole bunch of like different emails and you're just sequencing them and then when somebody opts into your email list or your email newsletter on your website or through Facebook or through you know, wherever you're promoting it, they will start to get this series of emails. And this could be, they get one email a week, it could be one email a day. I have somebody that emails me like every single day, they send me a tip about something and so therefore, uh, they basically sat down, they created all of the content at once, and then now when somebody opts into your newsletter, it gives you an opportunity to walk them down that funnel. So for example, um, let's say you're working for a university. So say you want to like work with the alumni, one thing you can do is uh, you could set up an email that says, you know, hey, here's my first email. Welcome, nice to meet you. You know, have a little bit of discussion with the person. Second email that goes out might be something that says, you know, hey, here's the best way to connect with us. We're on whatever social media channels. If you're just on, say, Facebook or Instagram, tell them that and send them a link. Hey, we'd appreciate it if you would follow us. And then that sequence continues. The third one might be something, for example, if you're tapping into your alumni, hey, if you're working on a project or you've got something that you want us to actually know about, feel free to you know, send us a message. Here's our email address. Put such and such in the subject line. This way you manage the content that comes in. And that whole, you know, that's one example. That can continue as much as you want it to be. It could be, for instance, tips. You could send out a tip of, you know, a tip of the week. So that way people know, hey, I'm getting an email once a week from this brand, uh, this business, this individual. But it's a way for you to also stay top of mind to them as well. Um, the other great thing about this is every piece of content that is in that email newsletter, that email sequence, if it's a link, um, it could be a link to a social media channel, it could be a link to, you know, um, it could be a link to a product, it could be a link to a specific article. For instance, if you have a link to an article that's on banking, you can have it where when somebody clicks that link behind the scenes, you see what they click, you see when they open it, but then if they click the banking one, you move them to another email list where they're, you're, you're learning more about who your customer is and delivering exactly what they want. For versus I'm sending you everything and hey, I'm hoping you click something. Uh, another uh, feature that you can use, this is SlideShare, this is owned by, Link, uh, owned by LinkedIn. Basically you can turn any of your presentations into a SlideShare, which basically it's, it's just a, um, 
slideshow presentation that can get embedded in content, but it also lives on SlideShare and it lives on LinkedIn. So therefore, if you're uploading content there, it can go back to your, um, your social channels. It also gets crawled for SEO. So make sure you put the description and the tags utilizing the right terms. So let's talk about some audio formats. How many have a podcast? I think there were a couple people on Twitter that had podcasts. Okay, so uh, one thing you can also do is you can either create an original podcast or you could turn your podcast, or sorry, you can turn your blog post into a podcast. You have to remember, not everybody is gonna be available to read your content, so you can create a podcast. And the podcast could be as simple as, I'm just gonna sit here and read my blog, my blog post uh, and record it. Now, you know, for example, Aaron and I were talking about this. I use a, um, a, a Zoom H5n, it's a little portable audio uh, player. I can take this with me wherever I want and just open my you know, article and I can sit there and read it and now I can put it up on iTunes uh, or Stitcher or Last.fm or any of the tools for podcasting and now I have an audience that I can, I can build an audience on that particular channel. Uh, here are a couple of tools, by the way, uh, for helping you get started with this. If you're looking for something that's pretty quick, Anchor, that was that image I showed you earlier where people can take snippets. Anchor is a great way to do that. Um, Farit Recording Studio, it's a mobile uh, podcasting app. Basically, it's on your iPhone and you can layer in different parts of content. You can have background music, an intro, an advertisement, but you can basically uh, turn all of your written content into a podcast. Another feature, you can also embed your podcast on your, on your blog post. So for example, you're driving people to your website and you're like, hey, you know, do they want to read it? How much time are they spending on the site? Site, site time is a Google you know, search indicator. So what you can do is you can also embed your blog post um, into your, or sorry, embed your audio into your blog post. And this way people can listen to it, uh, they can download it and work with it on the go. Um, it's also a way for you to learn more about your audience and the type of content that they want. Uh, a couple of tools I recommend, one's called Smart Podcast Player. Basically it pulls all your content from iTunes and gives you a really nice player uh, with the ability also to have people opt into an email list. So that way they can say, hey, I want to get notified about all your episodes. And then this way they'll be able to get them. Uh, how many of you in the region use Alexa at all or Google Home? I don't think we have a giant. Do it. Okay. So Alexa is uh, another way for you to record an audio version of anything you're doing. Basically, like for instance, for my show, I create an Alexa recording. Um, it's about two minutes long, and it's just me telling people, here are the headlines, and all people have to do in this case is say, you know, Alexa, like what's my flash briefing? It'll start the flash briefing, they'll listen to me for like two minutes. At the end, I tell them, go to this URL, and the URL is utilizing the pretty links feature I told you earlier. Um, that will be a way to drive them back to the content, and you can use your metrics to see um, what, you know, are people actually listening, how much are they tuning in, how much are they actually listening to, do I need to shorten it, do I need to lengthen it? Okay, so let's talk about repurposing video. How many, how many have a sizzle reel for your business? This is essentially a highlight reel. Okay, so a sizzle reel, basically it's taking some of your best content and putting it together um, for, you know, it could be your social media channels, it could be uh, to put it on your homepage of your website. Again, you have to stand out from the competition. We're not creating more content, like just more and more and more content. We're being smarter with the content we are creating. So in this case, um, you could create a sizzle reel for what you did for the month, for example. That could be, uh, that could be a video that you create and you now have social content uh, um, to, you know, to help uh, drive discussions with people on your social channels or any of the other places you're at. And by the way, if you need a tool for that, um, same thing, again, you want to make sure you have a custom link at the end, something that's easy for your audience to remember to go type in, something that's not very complicated. And all of these links, they're all available when the uh, presentation gets sent out in a couple of weeks.
Okay, so um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn has a feature to be able to record videos. You know, a, a lot of people don't, I, I know a lot of people probably haven't tapped into this, but um, experiment with different types of content. You know, see if your audience wants to have you on screen or if they want to read your text updates. Uh, so tap into that um, area. Another thing you can also do though is, you know, if you're an expert in your field or, you, you know, you're working for a company and you're gaining more expertise every single day that you're on the job, you can go on to LinkedIn and you can join, for instance, some of the groups I think you, get, you have an amazing group, don't you, Aaron? I think like 70,000 uh, members, I think, right? Like you could go on to LinkedIn, you could record a video, and it's a personal video that I'm recording directly for somebody versus, oh, hey, go check this out. You know, like, you know I'm hiding behind my screen. So it lets people get to know you as a person. Uh, for those of you who haven't gotten into vlogging yet, uh, vlogging basically this is just a blog that's done in video form. You could do the same, you know, this is another feature, another way for you to experiment with video. For example, if you're not a video creator, vlogging is a great way for you to just fire up your camera on your smartphone, talk to your audience, share it with them, let them get to know you, you get more comfortable on camera. Um, so it's a great way for you to get some more exposure. And again, like talk about the topics that you are knowledgeable about, that you're passionate about. And that's gonna shine through, by the way, when you do that in your work. Okay, so a couple of other ideas for you. These are you know, going beyond the blog post, the social media content, and some videos. Uh, recommend you know, developing a training course. Again, take, your, take all the existing content you've created, turn it into a training course, and turn around and sell that training course. There's no sense in reinventing the wheel and saying, hey, I have to make a new, you know, I have to make a training course that doesn't include anything on my website, it, you know, that doesn't exist. So repurpose, repackage, and turn it into a training course. Uh, two tools you can sell on Teachable or Udemy, uh, great places as well. Uh, do it, yeah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Another thing you can also do, so we can turn our content into a presentation. So in this case, it could be you know, a combination of social media posts, um, it could be blog posts that you've already written. Uh, for example, you know, maybe you just want to jot down your ideas and you're like, hey, I want to put together this presentation. Um, Haiku Deck is a really neat little tool. You basically go on to the PowerPoint slide, you put in your bullet points, and it will automatically go and source all of the images based on the keywords that you've put into your presentation. So instead of taking you know, five hours to build a presentation, it might take 30 minutes to an hour and you can just do tweaks here and there if you need to. Uh, for those, you know, infographics. I know infographics are, you know, they're, they're still used, not as much, but you can take your content or you can combine, you, know, you can partner with other people and build your own infographics. Uh, once you're done with your infographic, great thing to do is to, to pen it to Pinterest. Uh, you know, create a board about infographics or create a board that is specific to the category that your content would go into. Uh, again, people love images. They love the visual aspect of things. So consider creating an infographic and then see how much traffic you drive, in this case, from your Pinterest channel. Um, animated GIFs. Again, I mean, you don't have to, you know, we talked about video today. It doesn't have to be a very long video. You don't have to make a five, 10 minute video. Sometimes you just need to turn them into a GIF. So you can basically take, you can sequence them, make, you know, a couple of screens and turn it into a very short piece of content that somebody can watch and they can get the point or, you know, they can take away basically what they need to know um, in a matter of seconds. For those of you who need to create these, the Shortcuts app, this is for an iOS phone. Um, Shortcuts app is a fantastic tool and then Cloud app as well. Cloud's, Cloud app is a uh, free freemium tool, but it will let you create animated GIFs. You can do screen recording um, as well. You can capture all of it, anything you need. Uh, for those of you also, again, you'll, you'll see some of the same tools I'm mentioning, but like you can host a webinar. So you can take anything that you've written, for example, and turn it into a webinar, partner with somebody, and then now you have, uh, you know, an online course, essentially, like somebody can go and they can learn from, you know, instead of somebody trying to do everything themselves, they can work with other people and, hey, you have a fantastic uh, way for you to, you know, generate leads for your business. Um, again, a couple of tools I recommended these earlier, but like short stack and like lead pages. Again, it's you're not, you're not adding thing, anything new. You're utilizing the tools that you might already be using. Um, 
we talked about sharing images on your social media channels. You know, turn your quotes into graphics. Again, it's about visual content. So you've got tools such as Canva, Pablo, uh, Quotes Cover, Quozio. Those are uh, great tools for you to, you know, take a great quote that somebody, you know, that you heard and turn it into a piece of content. Uh, for those, you know, yes. Oh, sure. Good. Okay. Uh, so, for those of you, you know, if you're technical, you can consider creating a white paper. Now, this could be something that you just publish on your site. By the way, you can search for PDFs on Google. So, if you write a white paper, you know, it's a very thorough piece of content uh, that can actually surface on Google just for people looking for PDFs. I know people look for instruction manuals and that type of stuff, but this could be, for example, you could write a white paper on all of the scientific data, you know, that you've collected if you're, you know, a data scientist. Uh, you can also turn that white paper though into a download. We talked about it earlier, creating a landing page about your white paper and then having somebody opt in to get that white paper. Um, so that's a great way for you to, you know, also give back to your community and, but also to show your own expertise. Uh, case studies, for example, you, you know, you're always collecting data. We're always, you know, analyzing data to help us make marketing decisions. Create your own case study. You know, utilize your own customers. For example, there's a lot of people that, at one of the conferences I've been at, you know, people, uh, they go on and they, you know, they basically just survey the audience and get feedback from the audience and then they create a case study around it. Now, then they publish that and it says, hey, I've got the 2018, you know, marketing study on such and such topic or such and such industry. They don't tell people, hey, that came from just the people that are attending my conference, but you know it's a great way for you, for instance, to also build your expertise um, and also to get that information out there that you, you know you're able to collect and analyze. Uh, I also talked about this earlier, but creating a guide or an ebook. Um, this is you know another a great way for you to uh, get the word out about what it is you do. It could be to turn written content into you know downloadable content that has additional examples. Um, it could be an ebook that somebody gets you know that that's your guide to you know whatever topic you want to write about. And you can make this an opt-in, or you can give it away for free. You really have to kind of just determine what your audience wants. So um, basically, you know, it's not about creating more content. I mean, the fact that there's just a sheer amount of content that's published every single day. I mean, it's just, it's too much content to consume. So you just have to be smarter about what you're creating. I recommend, I, I'm not saying pick every piece of content and do this. Pick the ones that your audience is going to possibly use. If you notice, hey, they're on Twitter the most, then consider experimenting with, you know, uh, audio, with Twitter audio. Consider maybe trying a Twitter chat. You know, if Twitter's not your thing, and you can usually tell that by just looking at the analytics and the activity or asking them, for example, and utilizing the feedback you get from your customers, start to create the content, you know, for where they're at. Um, again, you know, uh, basically it's, uh, you know, the, the analogy here is like, you know, just uh, measure once and then, you know, just cut. Like, so you don't have to like constantly like do all these different things, um, but experiment. Experimentation is absolutely key. So thank you very much. Um, I want to thank you all for sticking around and listening to the presentation. I really appreciate it. If you have questions, you want to connect with me, um, here's the best way to do that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So does anybody have any questions? I'll start with that and then I'll go into the wrap up. Oh, let me get the, let's get the catch box. Assist. So what do you personally use out of all of these? Yes. What do you find the, the best, uh, personally? Are you talking tools or are you talking tools. features? Okay, yeah. tools, I actually use all of those tools. So I, here's the thing. No, here's the thing, though. Every tool is every tool is different. You know, for example, I have uh, different tools I use for quotes. 
Here's the reason why. I use different tools because if you use the same one that everyone else uses, it all starts to look the same. You'll get to the point where you see, oh, hey, you know, uh, Chanel here, like, she's publishing an image. Like, you'll start to spot as you look at content, you'll see, hey, everybody's using the same thing. So I use different tools. I also use them because sometimes they're easier to use on mobile versus desktop. I might like one over the other sometimes. Um, from a landing page perspective, you know, somebody asked me about Unbounce earlier. They asked me about, you know, lead pages, short stack. They all perform things a little differently. Uh, for example, um, Unbounce, it, it's mainly WordPress based. You know, in some cases, it, some people might find it complicated to use. Uh, they might want the drag and drop interface. So I use, I use lead pages a lot and I use short stack as my two tools. But I kind of bounce back and forth between them uh, based on the features that are available. Any other uh, couple of questions over here? So what? Um, hi. So hi. I um, am a marketing assistant for the University of Johannesburg. Okay. And um, so mostly we like promote shows because it's arts and culture department, right? So okay. productions and shows and stuff. And um, most of our target audience is students. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you can tell me, but I want to know what, I want to say which social media platform is, is do you think is better, like for, so solely to promote shows and productions, but also to reach like the younger market versus just putting it out on Facebook and just for everybody, like for, so, I don't know if you get my question. No, I do. Okay. So basically you want to know which social media channel to use to get the content in front of the younger audience. Yeah. And like maybe just like more leads or like one that's like more interactive because we use Facebook mostly because it's okay. just broader, but I don't mm -hmm. think it's actually getting to the people that we wanted to get to. So I think the first thing I would do is I'd ask, I'd survey my students. I'd ask them what kind of feedback they, you know, they can provide. Ask them, for example, uh, what social media channels they use. Uh, rec I'd recommend maybe having like a, you know, have a quick survey form. So it could be, you could use Google Forms. So it's google.com slash forms, I think. That's one way uh, you can check out SurveyMonkey. And then uh, there are a couple other interactive surveys that people can take. Now, you don't want these to be complicated. You want them to be fun. Yeah. So it might be, for example, maybe you have somebody, maybe you have a written survey somebody has to fill out. That way it's kind of saved. Or you could, also create something, for instance, on Facebook, maybe you want to actually make a Facebook live video mm -hmm. and say, hey guys, we want your feedback and tell them, you know, either to leave it in the post or to email you or however you want them to get in touch with you. Um, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't leave it up to them and say, hey, just message us because you're going to get people emailing yeah. you and, and whatnot. That's so um, that's the first thing I do. And then once I do that, I would make sure my questions are very pointed. If you're wondering what social media channels, I would say, you know, Snapchat, for example, I didn't mention it. It's a great interactive platform, but a lot of people, at least in my area, a lot of them are on Instagram, for instance. So you kind of have to ask the audience where they're at. Um, look at your data as well. So, you know, kind of see like how active are people. Um, your, your analytics will tell you exactly what you need to know. All right. Thank you. Hi. So just a couple of questions. Sure. For where I work and the university I work, and for um, very opposite to her, is okay. that our clients are much older. Okay. They are people who are either in the, doing their masters or their PhDs, and in East Africa, the age is usually 38 going to 60. Okay. I don't think most of them are using social media or using it right. Okay. I've tried to do training courses on using hashtags. Mm -hmm. That has failed. Okay. This is why I'm trying to tease them. And for the content that we're trying to put out, let's say it's call for abstracts, mm -hmm. or we're trying to promote a conference that's sort of happening, for some reason we're not engaging on social media. Okay. We usually end up resulting to res like going on radio or on print, okay. and we've seen that to be more effective. Okay. So I worry if the social is social media relevant for my target audience, and I really worry about that? Um, I think in your case, 
I would probably consider the, e I, I like the radio and the print side. Yeah. You could actually incorporate some of the digital. So for example, you could use the tool Pretty Links, mm -hmm. set up a specific URL and drive people back to something that they need to read online. Mm -hmm. um, that would actually give you one indicator if you run it, for instance, on radio and say, and have a little call to action at the end. Okay. Um, see if they actually, see how affected that is, because mm -hmm. it'll actually give you the stats on how many people are going to it. Now the next thing is um, maybe look into your emails. How many people are opening like, I'm, I'm assuming you're emailing them or? Yes, the okay. emails are a bit more effective. So if they're doing emails, if, if email is an important one, you can always sequence an email into something and say, like I think an autoresponder would be perfect for you. Like asking them which social, if they use social media channels, mm -hmm. like, does that make sense? Yeah. So have an autoresponder. Um, the other thing I think would also be useful for you um, is to uh, one email, well, definitely email them. But also, if you get any one-on-one -on -one interactions with them, ask people personally. Like you know, hey, like Chanel, which social media channels do you use? You're gonna if the person says, oh, I don't understand social media, that's gonna kind of give you your answer. If you start to see, oh, hey, everybody's telling me the same thing. Mm -hmm. If they tell you that, ask the next probing question, which is, well, what's the best way for me to get in touch with you? Um, I definitely think that you're audience uh, will probably be on the email side. And then you may be able to figure out a couple of channels for social to use, but I think email is going to be the best way to go. Mm -hmm. And last sure. question. Sure. Um, the other content that we publish for is for donors who are mainly in North America. Okay. But um, so the content is very formal. And I wonder if spaces like Facebook or mm -hmm. Twitter are the right platforms to sort of put out content there for our donors? Um, I th so if it's Twitter, a lot of times, I mean, Twitter's public, it's searchable, mm -hmm. but a lot of people really don't, they go there for news, mm -hmm. but they don't really go there to check out like, hey, somebody wrote some new content. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's not the same for everybody, but you're gonna have audiences where like, you know, they're just not gonna use Twitter. Mm -hmm. I think Facebook, like if it's back in the States, mm -hmm. I would say Instagram maybe would probably be uh, one of the channels I'd check out. And then I'd say Facebook would probably be my second one. Now, LinkedIn? Uh, LinkedIn as well, yeah. So, uh, so Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and then I would consider, in your case, probably having some paid behind it and targeting just the people in North America. So that way uh, you can have it where, for example, you can run a Facebook pixel where somebody goes to your website and let's say they read an article, uh, you can then run an ad that's targeted to them um, based off their demographic data. So that's the data they provide Facebook. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Sure. The, most times I struggle with um, coming up with like things to write. Because right? okay. like for my personal page, I feel like I could okay. like speak on ends. But like when it comes to like so putting up something about a, a production, like obviously I have the information when the show is and blah, 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 blah. But like I just, I want to know, like, what do you, or how do you draw inspiration or just find, like, a way to just generate content? Sometimes I feel like I just have writer's block and I can't so like, like, think of anything. Sometimes what? A writer's block, like when I'm trying okay. to write a post mm -hmm. and then I'm just like, I have sure. nothing to say, but I have, like, information, but I just never know what to say or, like, how to say it. So I just want to know if there's anything that you do do to try and, like, better how you write or find ways to write better or there's anything you can... So I use, a, for my writing tool, I use a tool called Ulysses, but basically you can use any notepad editor. Uh, what I do is I keep, an, uh, I keep a list of all of the topics that I might want to write about. Mm -hmm. And then this way I've always got content to go back to. Now as far as coming up with content ideas, um, I think that for one, if you're writing for a specific audience, ask the audience or pay attention to the questions that they ask you. If they ask you, for example, about a specific topic, write that down and say, hey, you know what, I've got a piece of content here. Um, look at, you know, if you look at the comments that you get on your content, if you get comments, that's another indicator that will help you determine what you should write. You know, and if you don't know, if you're, for instance, if you've built a bit of an audience, um, send them an email, ask them if you can send them an email. And that email could have um, a link to, uh, in this case, it could be a link to, um, you know, to submit feedback to you. Ask them what they want, ask them what you, uh, they want you to write about. That's the first thing. Now, if you're not sure what to come up with, uh, just determine what niche it is, and then I just start, you know, do Google search. What topics are there? What, what is my area of expertise? What can I write about at, ad nauseum, like, without getting bored and tired? 
So I would do that and then just start jotting down ideas. There's no, there's no silly idea, there's no wrong idea. Um, just jot down any idea that you come up with and then you can always build it out. Okay. So uh, I'm going to do a quick conference wrap up, but I want to thank everybody for coming to Digimarcon Africa. Um, thank you very much for spending the last couple of days with us. Uh, I've really enjoyed you know, getting to meet you all.